Hey guys, so this is going to be a review of my two-week trial using the brand Bosha. I want to say before we get into this video a couple quick things. Number one, I don't thank you guys enough for being amazing subscribers and I genuinely, genuinely appreciate you guys. You're so supportive. I just feel like I need to say this after, you know, the Sunday Riley video and everything that's been going on. I just, I really appreciate you guys. Number two, I am trying so hard to like find this balance of feedback and how to do these videos. So the next video I am going to go back to doing before and afters of my skin. Some people said it makes the videos too long, but I miss them. I miss doing it. And number three, I wanted to comment really quickly on my thoughts about clean at Sephora. If I think this is a good categorization for how to purchase your skincare or makeup products. And I've ultimately decided that I do think it is largely because if you are interested in avoiding any of the long list of ingredients that Clean at Sephora does not allow in the products, I think it can be helpful. Uh, it's a bit of a strict list. I don't think that you necessarily need to avoid every single ingredient on there, but I'm gonna be honest that one of the things that I avoid is formaldehyde releasers. This is personal choice because formaldehyde releasers are approved in a low percentage in products. My concern is just with them building up because I do use so many any beauty products. I try not to use too many products that contain those ingredients like DMDM hide and toe in. Uh, so I, you know, I think it's, it's helpful in that aspect and that now if I see that little label, now I immediately know, oh, there's a product that's free of formaldehyde releaser. So I think that it can be very helpful, but I wish that it covered everything. And my biggest gripe with it is that I really think it should be only cruelty-free brands. I really have complicated thoughts on cruelty-free. You guys probably know that, but I, I just, I think that you're giving people this categorization system that could be more helpful because people who are looking to avoid those ingredients are typically looking for cruelty-free, at least in my head. And, and I think it would motivate brands to focus on that more and maybe we'd actually get more productivity out of understanding what cruelty free is. But that's all I wanna say. I wanna jump into Bosha. This is a smaller trial than usual. I'll comment real quickly on my skin though. Uh, I don't think that any of these products were going to have a significant impact on my skin. And that's pretty much what I saw this brand. Uh, mostly I just did cleansers. Mostly I'm sticking with just testing out some new cleansers and figuring out how I cleared up my skin, mostly. <laughs> I like that now I, now I say this with a couple breakouts. I think it's the foundation I've been using. I really think it is. I don't think this brand really left a tremendously lasting impression on me in the most honest way I can say that, but I did like uh, about half of these products, a good amount. Two I didn't like, and then one I, I just think it's not for my skin. So let's do this one, favorite to least favorite. I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't enjoy the detoxifying black cleanser, I did enjoy it. This retails for $30 for five ounces, and it's very unique in that once it makes contact with your skin, it gives you a warming sensation. I don't know, it just kind of feels like hugging your face or something. It's, it's, it's not doing anything, it just feels enjoyable. But I shouldn't say it's not doing anything because overall it is a good cleanser. It has vitamin C, it has glycolic acid, which is kind of gonna be a little useless in a cleanser, but it is also a gentle cleanser. I don't have any problems with it. I, I think it was just overall just very, very nice to use. I liked it. I guess basically if you can say that a product was enjoyable and doesn't have any cons, I think that's overall a good thing. I also enjoyed the Makeup Breakup Cool Cleansing Oil. This is $32 for five ounces. The only thing I do wanna say about this is that it is very high in olive oil, so I would absolutely recommend, I mean, you should never use a product like this without it being part of a two-step cleanser. So if you're gonna use this, make sure you follow with a good cleanser to remove everything. Uh, also, it contains menthol, and I, I, I think that you can probably pull off menthol in a cleanser, but it's not overall the best ingredient for your skin. Still, it is enjoyable to use. It's very cooling. You don't want to get this in your eyes, though. Honestly, the biggest offense with this product is that they're guilty of bad math because the travel size is going to be less expensive. So the travel size is $10 for 1.7 ounces. That is the same amount that you would be paying $10.88 for buying the full size. I never complain about this, but I do find it really funny when that is the circumstance. Uh, and then we, oh, this one. Ugh. So I have the Sake Cleansing Water. I looked this product up one week ago and it was still available, and as of today, it is not. <sighs> 
See, this is how you know I'm not sponsored because a brand wouldn't send me a product they're about to discontinue. You know it, you know I'm not. It's a shame because I actually did really enjoy it, but I did notice a week ago when I was reading those reviews, this is no, no rinse makeup remover and cleanser. It is not good at removing makeup. There were people giving it one star for that, but everybody that used it just as a micellar water, which is the way I use it in the morning, not taking off any makeup just as a pre-cleanse for my day. If you use it that way, it's great. It, people were giving it five stars. It's just, you know, it's, it is, in some ways it's Bosch's fault. You put on here makeup remover. If it doesn't re remove makeup well, I guess you're gonna be pulling it from the shelves. It's interesting too though, because this product never went on sale. I'm guessing that Sephora just had a lot of returns to deal with, so they pulled it. If you see it at TJ Maxx, and if you use micellar waters the way that I do, again, not to remove makeup, grab it, it's, it's a nice product. Okay, here's one that I don't think was for my skin type, but I don't really have a problem with. This is the Porefecting White Charcoal Mattifying Treatment Primer. It is $38 for 1.35 ounces. Uh, this contains witch hazel, so when you put this on your skin, it really does minimize the appearance of your pores pretty much immediately. It's not like, a lot like using a witch hazel toner. The problem that I had with this is that makeup just did not layer well with it. I saw some other people in the reviews saying the same thing, but then people with more oily skin seem to love it, so I don't really want to form too much of an opinion on it. A mattifying treatment primer is very clearly not for somebody with dry skin, so I don't, I don't want to come for that one too much. Then we have the Revitalizing Black Charcoal Hydration Gel. This is $40 for 1.7 ounces. Okay, so I, I dislike this product for a couple of reasons. One is that... This really is going to give your skin a gray cast, which is not a particularly flattering look on my skin. It's interesting though, one thing I have to say about this, I had never really thought about how moisturizer can do this. It never had occurred to me. So now this is something I'm gonna keep in mind when I enjoy a, you know, very milky white type of moisturizer is it might leave uh, in a bit of a cast to a deeper skin tone. You know, it's so hard to try to imagine yourself in every other person out there's shoes. Uh, but sometimes you're just kind of hit in the face with the reminder that other people experience life differently. That's not my biggest problem with this. My biggest problem with this is that this does contain menthol in a leave-on product. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the reason why I have some breakouts going on. It could be, but I also wasn't very consistent with it because this. But just so you know, a lot of people in the reviews of this product did say that they were getting a lot of breakouts from it. So it's not particularly highly rated. Uh, it may just be that it's a product for more oily skin, but it, just, it shouldn't have menthol in it. All right, the last product that I'm going to talk about is the exfoliating peel gel. I've saved this for last because I don't like it and I have a lot of comments on it, but I also don't want to blame Bo. It's, it's going to be long. It's $34 for five ounces. <clears throat> Bosha claims that this is a chemical peel, okay? And I'm gonna show you how this works. So you put this on your skin, it's a gel form, and then as you rub it, these little blobs appear, and I, I feel like it'll show on camera, so hopefully I'm correct. Now this is not a unique product to Bosha. Peter Thomas Roth has a product like this. Actually, quite a few brands have products like this. I have always disliked these products because I feel like there is an inherent level of deception going on that you can't really blame on the brand, but it still exists. The problem that I have with this product is that when you use it and you see these little things up here, you could mistake these for dead skin. And there may be a small amount of dead skin, but there's something tricky that goes on in the ingredients these type of products contain something called carbomer, and when you mix carbomer with oil, it attracts the oil, it does pull it out, so you're getting a physical scrub, yes, but what you see is not dead skin, it's the actual carbomer combined with the oil. So on one hand, okay, it's an exfoliating peel gel, yes, because it is a physical scrub that is pulling out oils, but on the other hand, it's not doing as much as it physically looks like it is, especially if you don't know what Carbomer is doing. I wanna make sure I prove this adequately because I think that even when you say it, it's still hard to, hard to believe. So I put a glove on, there's the exfoliating peel gel. 
All right, it's doing nothing, right? That's what we expect it to do. Let me go ahead and drop in some of my ordinary marula oil. Sorry to waste you like this, marula. And lo and behold, suddenly there's all the dead skin, except it's not dead skin because I'm wearing a glove. Ugh. And again, I don't want to sound like I'm saying this is Bosch's fault because a lot of people want this product, a lot of people love these products, and I'm even kind of scared to be saying this in a video, even though I just said I need to never do that. I need to not be scared to say these things. But I was reading to see if other people felt that this is a gimmick to the same way that I did. I found somebody asking about this on, I believe, the Beautylish website. And it was just amazing to read that even though people were like, yeah, it's a gimmick, that's what Carbomer does, it interacts with oil, the person was like, yeah, I'm still gonna try it, but thanks for your opinion. It's like, okay, uh, okay. So, you know, on one hand, you can say Bosch is really giving the people what they want. They like to be able to see this stuff going on. We're just, we humans are fascinated by stuff like this. I think George Carlin covered this really well in a comic skit that he did a while ago where he was like, mm, look at this stuff that was on my face. Do you guys know the skit that I'm talking about? I feel like that's what's going on here. It's just we, we, we want it to be dead skin. And to some extent, yes, it is exfoliating, but it's just, it's just not quite what it looks like. And if you go and read the reviews, that's where things get really, really messy because this is very highly rated by people who are convinced and shocked at how much dead skin they have on their face. Oh, oh, oh. But what, what can you expect every person in the reviews to know what's going on here? No, they just think this product is cool. So I don't know, I don't want to rant too much more. And again, like I've said hopefully enough times, you are still getting a physical scrub. It is still pulling oil out of your skin. So that is my trial of the Bosha brand. I'm gonna stick with the cleansers. I really, I really like this and I'm gonna love it in winter since I'm such a naturally cold person and winter is so hard for me is so hard there's definitely a lot more products from this brand that i didn't try so if you have make sure you comment them below thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace out youtube